Okay, good morning as we go to the Chitas of today. Today is Thursday, which is the fifth reading in the portion of Chai Sada. We're holding on chapter 24, verse number 53. I ate the and the servant took out silver articles and golden articles. And all the and, all, and, and garments. And he gave them all to Rivka. And he gave delicacies. Nasala Khia he gave to his father to his brother, Bilima, and to her brother, her mother. Now she says, we've done an expression of sweet fruit. We brought with him various kinds of fruit from the land of Israel. And they ate and they drank. And the men that were with him, and then they went to sleep. They woke up in the morning, and he said to them, It's time to go home. Ah, she says, He lodged for the night. And her brother loved it. And her mother said, Let the young girl stay over here a year. The officer, 10 months. Why? We have to get her ready. We have to prepare her for the marriage. Can't just run right away and go take her. Now she said, What up to the father? Besuel, where did Besuel disappear? The Medjah says, He wanted to stop this marriage. He tried to poison Eliezer. And it and came an angel. And flipped the, uh, the 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 pot of porridge, and he died. So the soil died. Yamim, a year is a year. The time of redemption, as we see later on the Torah in the book of Leviticus, the Torah calls Yamim a year. For a maiden is granted a period of twelve months to get to outfit herself with ornaments. It takes time for her to get married. You can't just get married in one day. Ayasir, 10 chadash in 10 months, where it says Yom and it is to live in days. Not customary for people to make requests, to request a small thing and then say, if you're unwilling, give us more. So therefore, they said a big thing a year, at least 10 months. So he said to them, I'll talk, Racy. Don't delay me. Hashem is the Darkid Abishta has made my way prosper. Send me away, take me, let me do, let me finish my job, and let us let send me, take me, with, let her go with me. And she said, let us call the girl. Let's ask her if she's ready to go. Rashi is a mechanic over here. The Gemara learns. We learn for it. You're not allowed to marry a woman against her will. You have to ask her consent to marriage. It has to be a consensual thing. They asked, well, should I go with this man? She said, I will go. She said, I will go. They asked me, I'll go on my own. I don't need your permission. If you need the desire, I'm out of here. They sent the daughter. The sister, Esminika, saw, and they sent her with her nurse. They said, Evan Avram, and they sent it, Avram, it's not, they sent away, they said, Ivarcho is Rivka, and they blessed Rivka. Ayay Malach is saying, I said, our sister, Ati, I'll be the Baba. May you become thousands of merits. Ayida Zarach is saying, may you see, inherit the cities of their enemies. Rashi, what does it mean? May you and your seed receive the blessing that was stated to Avraham and Mount Maria. And I surely will multiply your seed. May it be through you, to Rivka. May it be will that those children shall be from you and not from another woman. Oh, but he knew. Avraham Avinu married two women. Yaakov Avinu married four women. He didn't realize that, uh, that, that, that Yitzhak is never, is, will only marry one wife. That will be Rivka, this girl. Taka Rivka and Rivka stood up and I had a seha and her maidens, but to Karvnala Gamalim, they rode together the camels. They went together with this man, 
and Yika and 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 the and Eliezer, the servant took Rivka Vayelach and they left. Verse sixty-two. and Yitzhak Isaac was coming from the Bel Roy. Who Yeshabat's a negative, and he dwelt in the land of the south. What was Yitzhak coming from? Now she's into Medrash. Medrash says Yitzhak coming was coming from Shahalach Lahavi Hagar. Yitzhak didn't want Abramavin to be alone. So he went back to find Hagar and he brought him back. She brought her back to his father so that they would get married. Yeshab had a Negev near the well, as it says. And Abram traveled from there to the southland and he dwelt in the Kaddish and Shur. And there was a well, there was the well was created, was, was located. As it says, behold, between Kaddish and Bennett. So he went to the south, he went to find Hagar and bring her back to her father, his father. He ate the Yitzhala Soba Sada and his Isaac went forth to pray in the fields. Lift Nisarev in the evening. Yisainov and he picked up his eyes by Yarvi and Gmal and Bayim. He saw, behold, that there's a bunch of, there's a caravan coming down the road. Now she said, Lashtuah, Lashtfila, he went out to pray in the afternoon, late in the late afternoon. So uh, there we see, the, the, from there, the Gemara also learned that, 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 uh, ya, that Yitzhak established the prayer of Mincha in the afternoon. He said, Rivka say now, and then Rivka also uplifted her eyes by Teres, Yitzhak, and she saw Yitzhak from a distance, Batipo Malagomal, and she let herself down from the camp. Now she says she saw his majestic appearance. She was astounded by him. She stood towards the earth. She leans towards the earth, but did not reach the ground. So the concept of, of bowing, so you know, to show you respect. Verse 65, of she said to the servant, who is this man, this majestic man? is coming towards us. This is this is the guy. This is my master. This is Yitzhak. And she took her veil and covers. This is reflexive. And the and the the servant told Isaac all the things that happened. All the things that were done. God says he revealed to him all the miracles that were brought for him. The earth had shrunk for him, and Rebecca had come to him eventually, you know, divine province, as a result of his prayer. How everything happened above and beyond expectations. And Isaac brought her to the tent of Sarah, his mother. And he took her, Mati and Elisha, and she became his wife. And he loved her. And Isaac, Yitzhak, was comforted for the loss of his mother. Now she says, he brought her into the tent, and behold, she, and Sa she was Sarah, his mother, meaning became likened to Sarah, his mother. Why? But as long as Sarah was alive, a candle burned from one Shabbos to the eve to the next. A miracle happened every Friday night when Sarah would light the candles, Shabbos candles, it would burn from Friday night to Friday night. Number two, a blessing was found in the dough. Her bread was unbelievable. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was good in quality and quantity. But on the and there was always a cloud that was over her tent. We mentioned Sarah was a prophet. She was greater than Ramavim. When she died, all these things ceased. They all went away. And when Rebecca, Ravai, Rivka came back, they resumed. And that's what it means. He took her to the day he realized that she's a Tzadikis. She's as righteous as her his mother. For his mother, in the way in the way of the world, as long as a person mother's alive, he's attached to her. But as soon as she dies, he finds comfort in his wife.
think it was a mama's boy. Uh, we, that, continues, that completes the Chumash. We now go to a new letter, the 30th letter of the Alter Rebbe. And this is again a letter about charity. Concept of Tzedakah. Many of the letters, many of these letters that the Alter Rebbe that are put in the Tanya are letters about charity. This is, a, this is a reasoned message of encouragement which the Alter Rebbe urges his Chassidim not to reduce their annual committed charities. Again, this is for the Holy Land. Alter Rebbe elected money for the Jews in the Holy Land, especially for his, his, his the Mendel Haradok and the group of Chassidim that went to the Holy Land from Russia. Even though the circumstance may have altered and they, the situation in Russia was not an easy time for the Jews. And they struggled, the Yidin and especially Chassidim. It was not such a, they were not wealthy Jews. Um, he reminded them once again, as above in the letter 21, that what counts is not only the total of one's contribution over a particular, but also the multiple benevolent actions. He wanted them to give constantly. They should give every day to Dukkha. The potent repercussion of the oft repeated activity resounds all the way up to the world of Atsilas, where they impregnate the spirits of Malchus, the mother, so to speak, of all created worlds. So you got the picture what the Alter Rebbe is going to tell them that, uh, that they should realize that a small deed that they do in this world every day, that they give constantly money to charity affects all the way up to the highest levels in the spiritual world. You should remember, whenever it says the world of Atsilas, just mentioned the world of Atsilas, the world of Atsilas. The world of Atsilas, you should already know that. It should be that in your, you should have that in your mind, that in Kabbalah, that's the highest, the highest spiritual worlds in the world of spirituality. It's the highest world. It's called the world of emanation. And it's called the world of unity, etc. So that's the highest worlds in the Malchus Datsilus, as you mentioned many times already. Malchus, the world of the attribute of friendship in the world of Atsilus, is the really the beginning of the formation of creation. As explained the couple. So here goes the letter. It is well known that our sage of blessed memory said, Whoever usually comes to show, and then suddenly he doesn't show up one day. The Abishter God, so to say, asks about him. So where are you? I'm usually in show, come to show in the morning, and you're not there. Shenemar, as the verse says, the, the Gemara, the verse says, who amongst you fears God, who listens to the voice of his prophet servant? who walked in darkness and whom no light shunned. So where are you who has been walking, so to say, the Gemara, and let's go over here and explanation a little bit. The Gemara, this is the Gemara. The Gemara in Brachis. The Gemara says, understands this verse as referring to a person who went to a, to a place of darkness. His path on this occasion did not lead in the performance of mitzvahs. He wasn't in Shul. He usually in the morning gets up and finds his way to the synagogue. And for some reason, he went someplace else. And this is why he did not attend synagogue. He went someplace else. Contrast. Commentaries on Tanakh understand this quoted phrase as referring to a person who finds herself in a situation of darkness and trouble. And even such an individual should not refrain from attaining what should. As the verse concludes, trust in divine name and rely on God. So there's two ways that the Gemara takes this verse in one kind of fashion, but this verse in the this verse in Tanakh could be meant many things. In this spirit, the present letter argues that even in a difficult situation, at a time of darkness, a Jew should not think of reducing his customary type of contribution. That's what the Alta Deb wants to They be saying to a Jew. I know it's time of darkness. That doesn't give the right 
for you to stop doing what you usually do. Just because times are hard doesn't mean it should affect you in a negative way. You should trust in the Abishu. Rather, you should trust in the divine name and rely on God. To turn now to the opening teaching. Whoever is accustomed to come to synagogue and one day he did not come, that's the, that's the Gemara. God inquired about him. This does not apply to it, the communal player in which the Gemara speaks, rather. And the Gemara means not only that, the Gemara means in any mitzvah. Dr. Rebbe wants to say. Dr. Rebbe wants to put the Gemara together with the rest of the commentaries. Who learned the Pasuk also differently? So Dr. Rebbe said the Gemara gives an analogy of, of, of going to the Shul. But really, in essence, it's not an argument between the Gemara and the other commentaries that explain the Mishnah. The ones who explain the Pasuk itself. Because they both together, because the Gemara is giving you an analogy, but it means everything. The Chayim Kovim and Fad Mitzvah is darker. So this the same applies to all commandments, especially the precept of charity, which is ba- which is balanced. Shikul and Kenekin Kovim Mitzvah is balanced against all commandments. Thus, if the busting of bite to prayer is surely a price to charity, a person retreats from his customary charitable charitability. Suddenly, he says, "I cannot afford to give charity. I can't afford what I gave last year." I need to stop my charitable giving. Times are tough, and I need to stop giving charity like I gave. Abish just says, what's going on? God says, what happened? Even though when one gives charity, makes a pledge, he's not, it's a blinad, it's without a vow. But one should, of course, see that it's an, a, a custom mitzvah that should not become such a legal force of vow. Always asking you to make a vow to give charity. People, you should do everything without a vow. I thought became, even though it's not a vow, and this is a pledge. You made a pledge last year to give $10,000. And suddenly this year, you're, you're looking at your, 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 your account and told you that times are tough and you cannot afford $10,000. You need to give $5,000. But Chayel, nevertheless, it's not becoming a divine soul. I should not give you Hashem believe it. Which uh, all the men of valor who hearts of fear of God has touched, that they should reduce that that is holy. You never reduce when it comes to holy things. You only go higher. They gave last year 10,000, this year she gave 11,000. Not to go down to 5,000. The restriction of charity contributions, they reduced the downfall of divine energy. From the sublime source, which is called Kaidish, holy, into the spirit of Savalya, stopping the flow of holiness. When it comes to holiness, you need to add, not subtract. Which they were relative to what they are accustomed to set aside annually for their wealth. So if that was your custom, the last year you gave 10, I was giving a number, you should this year give more. Which you gave money to uplift the spirits of the humble and the downcast, the less the Megamein who have nothing on their own, the impoverished settlers of the Holy Land. Which in turn in time, Magdalas referred to the fallen sukkah of David. As we mentioned this in the previous letter, previous letters. As also in the supernal swords, the spirit of Malchus, the will of the Sukkah's Dauphin and Felis, is, is, which is the Sukkah, which over here, the surrounding, encompassing uh, walls of, of, of protection of Jews in the land of Israel, the Sukkah of David, which is, the, which is also a comparison to the spirit of Malchus of the world of emanation. So you need to rebuild. The sukkah, that's what we say every, every, every on sukkahs, we say this harachaman in the, in the grace after meal. Harachaman may be the will for Yaakim Lanu, the God who re- reestablished the sukkah, David and Salah. The sukkah that David, the sukkah means the encompassing light. Like the sukkah is an encompassed light that surrounds the Jewish nation that has fallen down. Those fallen down. 
how to re rebuild that sukkah is by first of all helping the Jews in Israel to make sure that they're well well protected, that they're well, that they have the money and they have the needs to live in the land of Israel. Because by doing that, as we mentioned in the previous le uh, letters, that Israel is exactly facing Lamaila Malchus of the world of Atzilus. So since they face each other, so therefore, by fixing the walls, of, of uh, by uplifting the Jews in Israel, by making sure to uplift them financially, financially, helping them financially, uplifting them, that even though they have nothing, we're going to give them what they need. And that will uplift the Jews in Israel. That will fix their sukkah. That will, that will uplift their sukkah, which will uplift the sukkah in the world, of, in, the, in the spiritual worlds. The payment or not to raise and exalt the mehave echad be echad. That one, that, so that oneness is united with oneness. The context of the soul of this world, and this means that Sadaka unites one Jew with his fellow. In the supernal context of Sphidus, it refers to the desire of connection between the lower level of unity, which is called in Kabbalah, the lower level of unity, which comes, when it comes into being when the Sphidus of Malchus becomes a source to creation to the lower worlds, and the higher level of unity, which is the law, involving the higher six emotive spheres, which transcends the direct contact of the created world. This is the union of Kutcha, Bricho, Ushkinte. You say this every day, you're dominant, whether you're real or not. You say it before Baruch Shama, the shame, Yechud, Kutcha, Bricho, Ushkinte. May it be for the sake of the unity between Kutcha, Bricho, blessed be he, Kutcha, Bricho, that's we. That's one of the ways you say, what is God? When you want, when the, when the, <laughs> we mentioned this in the class, what is God? And the answer is, how does the Teda, or how does the, the sages, or how does it be expressed in the davening? Kod shabrichu, kodesh baruchu, blessed, holy is he. So what is God? I don't know what God is. He's holy, he's above and beyond anything. He's holy, he's separate. Kutcha Bricho. But we want the unity between Kutcha Bricho, the unity the way it's above in the oneness of God. It should become one. Ushchinte. Shchinte is the way it comes into the world. We want the unity of the upper worlds and the lower worlds. That's the whole purpose. That's why we do mitzvahs. That's why we daven. That's why we do everything in this world to bring the unity the way it's above to be way below. The way it should be connected below in this world. The shame, the oneness within one. The union of Kutcha Bricho and his Shechina, which is also called, remember, Shechina is also Malchus Tatsilas. So, what do we want to bring about? We want to bring about the unity, the way it's united in the world of Atsilas. The way Malchus, the kingship of the world of Atsilas, is united in, 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 with, with, with all the other spirits in the world of Atsilas should be the same thing here. We say that in Davi also in a different way. May it, just like God brings unity above in the upper world, may he bring unity in this world. And where does this unity start in this world? This unity starts in this world when we unite with one another, when we care about one another, when we uplift one another. That's where this unity starts. So therefore, we need to up now to that was right his letter, we need to uplift the Jews, especially in Aritz Israel. And as the Gemara says, everything is judged according to multiplicity of action. Multiplicity. We don't look, we're not only looking for one action, one big action, we're looking for many actions. 
So as the Alter Rebbe is in letter 21, if you remember, it's possible to divide the sum of the set stock if you decide you're going to give $10,000 this year, instead of giving one check of $10,000, which might be great for the organization. But, but uh, you should take the $10,000 and divide it into 365 days of the year. With many individual acts of charity. I might have explained that this refines the soul. Because you're doing something every day. You're doing the mitzvah every day. See, this says that each act of giving affects the union of the world's above. So my mind, he says, you will need a rectification every day. You can't just do, if you give one time stuck, what about the other 364 days? No, it will take away Shabbos. So what about the other 300, with 52 Shabbos, and what take out, take out, the, out of 365? What do you do with the other 300 days, on the 315 days? So you need to do it every day. See, this goes a step further. What about the unity of God every day? So you did the unity of God one day. What about the unity of God every day? How are you going to do this mitzvah that brings unity between me and you? Between a poor man and a rich man. Between one Jew and another Jew. That's the Maisa. That's why we do Tzedakah. Tzedakah brings Shalit. Tzedakah brings peace between us. Tzedakah unites us. So therefore, we bring unity. We're connected. We're sitting in Russia, and Alter Rebbe says, and you are the Jew sitting in Israel. And how do we connect with that Jew? By helping him, uplifting him. Boy, the Alter Rebbe had explained that the above a piss, that one's annual contribution for the needy of Eretz Yisrael should not should be given weekly, or at least monthly. But therefore, be that here is the warning against reducing one's contribution one year. I'm for saying it to the following year. Alter Rebbe says, I'm going to say, you know what? This year is bad. I'll wait till next year. No, the Alter Rebbe says, don't wait till next year. What are we? What, what, how are we going to create the unity of God in the world this year? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have this unity this year. We'll wait till next year. So you can't do that. You can't do that. Because the, 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 the present year will be lacking the multiplicity of action. Clear that the Altadab is not speaking of a situation in which a person simply thinks of not giving because of difficulties, those kinds, because he already said in Epistle 16 that even if one needs to borrow for food, he should give to Docker. Well, according to the account, the Altadab will soon point out the level of divinity from which one elicits God's greatness is determined by the magnitude of the total amount whether it's hundreds, thousands, or whatever. Multi multiplies of a, of a hundred, for example, relate to the level of Kesser, reducing one's regular gift, thus proportionally reduces both his great amount and his cosmic effects. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you let's see how we're inside. As a, the sages of blessed memory said, all individual coins of charity and add up to a great amount. As taught by a sage of blessed memory, when is the when is Havaya? God's name, Yudke Vafke, great. It should be in when he's in the city of our God. What does that mean? God's greatness is revealed when a divine name, Havaya, is vested in the spirit of Malchus and illuminates it. Malchus is the realm of speech, is known as the city of God in Kabbalah. But just as a city is composed of many dwellings, which in turn is composed of many bricks, so too is the realm of speech, built up of many letters and a combination of many letters. In Sefi Yitzhida, this Kabbalistic Sefer, letters are termed as stones, for they are the basic bricks in which form the, the ongoing divine created utterances, which are the source of all worlds and all created beings, speech. A sort of my mother, Snivra God created the world through the concept of speech. 
which is symbolic to that, that's like a city that's built to the concept of buildings and bricks, taking many bricks. You need to start off every building with a single brick. And through many bricks, you build a building. Thus, reveals the greatness of the ghost. So you take many bricks, builds houses, but ultimately builds buildings, and ultimately builds cities. After that, we now continue to speak about the city of our God. So what is the city of God, so to say? It was a When is the, is the, the greatness of the name of, of Avaya? Is when when it comes into Sfira Samalchus. When you see the greatness of God when it comes into the, to the attribute of kingship, when it comes into the world. Where do you see the greatness of God? It's another expression. You see, the Gemara says, Where do you see the greatness of God where you see his humility? Um, this is that over here. Where the Abishta comes into the world. Where do you see the greatness of Al Tareb wants to say over here? Where do you see the greatness of where it comes into a cheshbin? This is the spiritual state of a place of reckoning, Hejbin. For reckoning is possible only with entities that are finite and divisible. And Malchus is the source of all finite and divisible created beings. This is the way Kabbalah says, hey, Masai, where do we see greatness of Yudke Vafke, the infinite power of God? Is when he comes into the spirit of Samalchus, when he comes into the attribute of kingship. Your eyes are wells in Hedgebrain, in, in an accounting. Since a well or a pool is a receptor for water that flows down into it, well serves as a term of Malchus. You know, this is very connected to the Torah because Yitzhak was a digger of wells. This way, you can see this explains the concept of Yitzhak. Yitzhak was a digger of wells. If you look at the Torah, seemingly that was his business. He dug wells. Whether he dug the wells of Abraham, he dug new wells. He was a digger of wells. And meaning the feminine spirits which receives the downfall of divine service from the higher spirits. The word Hedgeban is a biblical place. The biblical in the title is a, there's a place called Chajbein. But it, it, on a non-literal level of Drush, it is here understood in its dictionary meaning of reckoning. Right? That's a Chajbein. You're a Baal Chajbein. Din v'Chajbein. Make, make a calculation, a judgment and calculation. The allusion to the verse thus reinforces the identity of the concept of reckoning. Where is there a reckoning? In the sphere of Malchus, that's where there's a reckoning. That's where all the spirits come together. So, your eyes are, are wells in Cheshbon. That's the simple meaning. And Pasuk says, where are the wells? They're in the city of Cheshbon. The spiritual meaning, where is your eyes? Where's your wells? Where are all the wells of, of uh, where everything comes to the wells that it can go out to give the world water? That's in Cheshbon. That's in the place of Cheshbon. Where's that? In the spirit of Samach, which is the attribute of kingship. I'm a and is known that by the meaning of the above statement is that the result of an arousal for the man below. What means an, what means what means what means an arousal from the man below? That means my service. That's an arousal for the man below. Through my service in this world, Hamshachem when I, when I am a well of giving, of kindness and grace, in my sahat stock, when I become a well of giving, of charity, the rotsim 
with a goodwill. Save it, pardon me, office, with a friendly countenance. I do, I'm a well of giving in a good and a, in a positive way. That awakens up the well of giving above. The way you want to alter that business says you want to awaken up chesed l'mayla. You want to awaken up the well of giving, which is the world of malchus. You want, which that's us the ultimate in Kabbalah. Malchus is the well of giving. It's the, the force of creation to the world. Everything that comes to the world comes in Kabbalah through the world of malchus. You want to awaken up that well. You need to do it here, Lamata. You need to become a well of giving. will elicit an arousal from above. Yod Hashem Panov, and the countenance of God will shine forth. will radiance the downfall of grace and kindness. And supreme favor. And the fountainhead of life. Blessed Ainsaif. Whose greatness is unfathomable and utterly incomprehensible. Whatever, in essence, we even, the more we can show kindness here below. The mortal waking up an unlimited kindness above. Al bechinas malchusay malchuskal alamin. It'll ultimately come from the malchusay malchuskal alamin. It'll ultimately go from malchus to malchus to malchus of this world. It'll go from the kingship of the world of Atzilus. It'll go to the world to the kingship of the world of Yitzira. It'll go to the kingship of the world of. Bria first, and then the kingship of the of, of formation, and ultimately to become the kingship of this world in an abundance. Spirits of Malchus animates all created beings that are in the upper and lower chambers, which are all subject to the counting and reckoning. All according to the Hashem. All according to the account. We all need to be accountants. We have to realize that everything is according to the Hashem. The more I give in this world, especially I give with goodness and happiness and joy, the more it's given above. It says thousands and thousands of infinite number of men minister on it. Unlimited. Every mitzvah creates, another, every penny creates another, another man. To revert now to our above key phrase, Kajban Gadil, a great reckoning. Right? The Mishnah says, the Gemara says, Pruta o Pruta, every penny, Mesarefes la Kajban Gadil. Comes together as a big number. Giving stock with goodwill and a friendly countenance marries the infinite power of Gedela Vay, the great is God, with the finite framework of Cheshben, Fidus Amalthus, which is the source of all finite created beings. What a beautiful, beautiful teaching. Al Rebbe explained a very deep concept in Kabbalah, Yehudi Elon, Yehudi Tata, the unity of this of infinity above with the unity of the way it's here in this world through the act of charity. That if I give charity, I give every day charity. Charity. I can give every day charity a couple of times. If I call instead of giving one time, I give every day, I go every day to show, I give him to a good shachas charity, give him a charity. If I pass the Jew, I give him charity. A person asks me whether he's a Jew or non-Jew, I, I, I give him charity. I give big money. I give constantly. I'm constantly giving charity. 
I'm uplifting people constantly. And I do it in a happy way and not because I'm uh, forced to do it. I'm enjoying to do it. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy uplifting people. I want to help people. And I want to do it on a constant basis. I don't want to do it one time. I want to do it constantly. That elicits a, a revelation of God in this above. Brings a unity in the revelation of God in this above that ultimately unites with my act here in this world. And that's the yichud of yishtem yichud kutcher brichu, the unity of kutcher brichu, the, 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 the God way he's above and beyond ushchinte and the spirit of Samalchus and the attribute of kingship here in this world. Zel cheshbon gadol, and this is the meaning of the great amount, but the numerous acts of charity being about peace, as it's written, and the reward of Zdaka, Shalim. The reward of Zdaka brings peace to the world, brings unity between people. In Peter Shalom with Dava Machaber, what implies peace? Peace means that it implies the joining and reconciliation of two opposite extremes. In this context, in our context, what means the peace? What means peace? Not only brings peace between two people. It brings peace between the upper worlds and the lower worlds. It brings peace with something that is super, is above rational, above comprehension with comprehension. So the, uh, the extremity of the superior heaven loose the phrase of his greatness is unfathomable, referring to God's incomprehensible infallible. And the extremity of the inferior heavens, referring to Malchus, the lowest of spirits, and brings peace. By me being giving here in this world, brings peace in this world, and it brings peace in the upper worlds. I'm a slavish, but Bria Yitzir Asir. The infinite Kuchabrichu. The infinite aspect, the light of God, it's above and beyond reality, above and beyond physicality, even spiritual physicality, it brings about this unity in the upper worlds that comes down. The infinite light of God comes down into the world of Malchus of Axilus through my act of charity. And it comes down ultimately in the kingship of, of, of the world of Yitzhida. Or the formation, Ambria, or the creation, comes out ultimately in all spiritual worlds, comes out ultimately in the world of formation. It comes out ultimately into the world of creation, and it ultimately comes down into my physical act. I reveal, I reveal by my act of charity, the spirit of God in the world. And imagine if I can do it many times. I don't do it one time. I do it many times. Because in this world, I call it the Achashman. In the world of Malchus, it's all according to the Achashman. All according to the amount. And the more I can bring God in this infinite light of God in this world, I should do it as many times as I can. And as many times as Alter Rebbe ends off his letters, these situations have been dilemmated. And this should be enough to those who understand. The dilemmated, he explains, it suffice to the discerning. It should be suffice to those that comprehend. Those that don't comprehend, what can I say? But I, that was my negative expression. That's not Alter Rebbe. Dilemmated, it's enough for those that understand. And this should be enough to inspire you that you should not only give, but you should give more. <laughs> because the more there's darkness in the world, the more there's struggle in the world, the more we need Daka. Daka brings the concept of goodness to the world. So the more there's struggle in the world, you shouldn't stop giving Daka. You should give more Daka in the world. If there's more darkness in the world, start giving more. It's by giving more, you awaken up the concept of bringing God to the world. Because there's darkness. We need more light to chase away darkness. And there's no greater way of bringing light into this world by making peace in the world. We want peace in the world. There needs to be peace in the world. Well, 
That's the way we make peace in the world, is by helping each other, by giving charity to one another, by helping Jews that are slow, et cetera, et cetera. That's the way we bring peace in the world. So therefore, he begged this chassidim. I know it's difficult. I know you have no money. I fully comprehend that. That, but that's that's why we need more stock in the world. We don't need we don't need less stock in the world. We need more charity in the world. Beautiful letter of the Alter Rebbe. Uh, today is the twenty third day of the month. With this chapter in, in, in Psalms, it's chapter 108 to 112, chapter 108 to chapter 112. If you do those chapters in Tillim, you've done the chitas of the day. And it will be a great day, Be'ezat Hashem. I invite you all at 10 o'clock. We're going to have a beautiful sikh of the Rebbe at 10 a.m. Either come at Chabad or on this Zoom or at Torah Direct and come along together. It's a beautiful teaching of the Rebbe on the portion of the week. I wish you all a wonderful, beautiful, happy, healthy day. Give some tzedakah. Let's learn a day. Go to your pushka right now. Give a penny. Let's learn. Let's, let's, uh, let's learn. Let's not only learn something, let's do it. Give a penny to tzedakah at this moment. Give another penny. Even though you did it already, give it again. Give another penny. And uh, let, let's hope that our tzedakah brings peace in the world and the ultimate revelation of God in the world. And brings the ultimate shalom and rainbow. Piyasa shalom aleinu akoy slov yim ramein. May there be peace in the Jewish nation. May there be peace in the world. Let's hope Mashiach comes and there'll be the ultimate peace between us and God. Amen. And uh, I hope to see you all tomorrow at 8 a.m. We will continue the Chitas.